Okay, the, product, the lit littoral zone in the archipelago is by far the most productive habitat within, well, within the aquatic ecosystem, uh, certainly, certainly in most of the Great Lakes. It's sheltered, it's warm, it has nutrients coming in from the land, aquatic plant growth, a high diversity of, of organisms living there. I could spend a lot of time talking about fish because that is my background, but I'm gonna go over this very quickly. Because of the diversity of aquatic habitats, everything from deep offshore cold water to <coughs> coastal wetlands and a large productive littoral zone, all of the fish species found in the Great Lakes are found in Georgian Bay. We have them all because we have all of the habitat components there. It's not true for many of the other Great Lakes. The near shore fish, fish community, this is what, what we see mostly within the archipelago dominated by musky, sturgeon, gar, walleye, bass, bowfin, pike as the predators feeding on uh, a very large and diverse prey fish um, species list. It's changed a little over the years, still dominated by the same primary predators, although their numbers are down a lot, as most of you who are fishermen know. Cormorant populations have increased. We've introduced species like common carp and uh, round goby and zebra mussels. And these are clearly having an effect on just the ecology of what's happening in that warm water fish community. It's changed a great deal more offshore. Lake trout was the dominant predator feeding on whitefish and uh, lake herring. With the introduction of the sea lamprey, the lake trout populations were greatly diminished. Cormorant populations have increased. We introduced salmon, rainbow trout, brown trout, Alewife and smelt are now the dominant prey species. Some of the cisco species have gone extinct. And a quagga mussel, a relative of the zebra mussel, is just changing all of the nutrient dynamics in the offshore system. Reptiles and amphibians. We have the highest concentration of reptile and amphibian species in Canada. Again, not a surprise. It's the diversity of habitat, especially the coastal wetlands. That includes at least 34 species, many of which are near the northern limit of their range. It includes a number of species considered rare or at risk. And some of our favorites, the uh, fox snake, and this one was over six feet long, and the Massasauga rattlesnake, really one of the iconic species of the Georgian Bay coast. Mammals, at least 44 mammal species, from small rodents and bats to large ungulates and predators. And the northern and southern biomes meet on the Georgian Bay coast with species from both, and it's an important concept. The northern coast would include species like gray wolf, moose, lynx, fisher, marten, because these are species associated with the boreal forest. And the boreal forest is just to the north of Georgian Bay. So these boreal species come down quite a, a distance on the Georgian Bay coast. By comparison, the southern coast includes species like gray squirrel, chipmunk, white-tailed deer, cotton-tailed rabbit, wild turkey. Species more associated with the mixed hardwood forests uh, of southern Ontario and the southern Great Lakes. These two biomes meet on the Georgian Bay coast. So not only do you have this biodiversity gradient from outer islands, middle islands, inner islands, coast, you have the two biomes meeting on the coast. And aquatic mammals are particularly abundant. Muskrat, beaver, mink, otter, moose. And that's because of that incredibly wide, diverse, productive littoral zone. We have the highest density of otter, mink, beaver, muskrat, anywhere in the Great Lakes, because there's so much habitat for them. And especially for species like otter that feed on fish, you have this wide, productive littoral zone, protected habitats, and uh, an incredible food base. Terrestrial mammals like deer and many other species are generally limited to the islands on which they exist, but some like the black bear will come from a secure base island and swim from island to island, and most of us have seen that just looking for food, berries, whatever, through the summer. But they have to make it back to their, their base island. As you saw, there's no overwintering habitat on those outer islands. Birds, over 170 species of breeding birds. They include predators, eagles, osprey, waterfowl, shorebirds, offshore aquatic birds, plus many species of smaller woodland and meadow species. Again, the diversity <coughs> of habitat has resulted in incredible diversity of bird life, especially on the aquatic side. Just a, a note on the offshore island nesting colonies 
and these exist up and down the coast, and we've all seen them, incredible quantity and biomass of bird life just living on these bare offshore islands. Not because these islands are so productive, but that littoral zone around them with all of the aquatic pr productivity and fish support tremendous, tremendous diversity and, and, and biomass of colonial nesting birds. Osprey is an example. It's usually an ecological indicator or sentinel species, and we have quite a few of those on the Georgian Bay coast. So I just want to highlight that this is an archipelago ecosystem. Ecologists generally <coughs> like to have some physical boundary within which to describe or define an ecosystem. And the ones you're familiar with would be, say, watersheds. You know, we, we manage the landscape within watersheds. Examples would be mountains, ma a mountain range, a valley, a desert, a prairie. <coughs> This is, this is unique. Ecologists are not used to looking at the definer of the ecosystem as being an archipelago. There just aren't that many like this anywhere. This is an archipelago ecosystem, and it's relatively unique on a, on a global perspective. Okay, what are the exceptional ecosystem features of an archipelago ecosystem? Terrestrial habitat diversity. We've already talked about that, you know, from offshore islands to middle islands huge diversity of terrestrial habitat. Land water interface. The most productive habitat in any environment is the land water interface. Look at the amount of land water interface there is in this area. You could also define it as just the, the amount, the linear amount of shoreline. If you mapped out and counted all the linear amount of shoreline, the east coast of Georgian Bay has a longer shoreline than Lake Erie or Lake Erie, simply because it's an archipelago. That land water interface is the most productive habitat <coughs> that exists. Littoral zone, by far the most productive component of an aquatic ecosystem. Everything you see here is littoral zone. This is all littoral zone. Sheltered lakeshore habitats. Because it's sheltered, it provides habitat for all the species I just talked about. Waterfowl, reptiles, amphibians, shorebirds, aquatic mammals, mink, otter, all habitat for them because it's sheltered from, uh, from offshore storm events. Coastal marshes, unique to Georgian Bay. The number and quality of our coastal marshes. They exist because this is an archipelago. Without the protection um, of the island complexes, those coastal marshes would not exist. And finally, the proximity of diverse habitats. It's one thing to have a lot of diverse habitats within some geographical area. The importance is, is the proximity of these. And this is just one example. This is uh, an aerial shot off of uh, Sandy Island. In this one photograph, I can show you terrestrial diversity from bare offshore islands to middle islands to dense mixed hardwood forests, aquatic habitats that include sand beaches, shallow warmer waters, <coughs> offshore shoals, deep cold water, and onshore wetlands, all in close proximity. Proximity is important because those species, reptiles, amphibians, uh, fish, that need two or more of these habitats in their life cycle can all live in this area. They don't have to travel great distances to find the habitat they need for a particular part of their life cycle. Unique to an archipelago system that these kinds of habitats are in such close proximity. And one last point on archipelagos. Don't look at it as one big homogenous archipelago. From an ecological perspective, there are archipelagos within the archipelago. And from an ecological point of view for biodiversity, that's critical. These islands here are able to be used by species that have secure habitat on the larger island. This again is Sandy Island. If Sandy Island weren't here, the ecological function of this group of islands would be very different. So this function functions as an ecological unit, an archipelago unit, because it's so far offshore from the mainland, this is the functional ecological unit. That archipelago within the archipelago. Another example, uh, Alexander Islands, a fairly secure habitat surrounded by this part of the same archipelago, increases the amount of biodiversity and use of these islands simply because this island is there 
and provides that secure overwintering habitat. So when you look at the archipelago, it's not just this homogenous group of islands. Ecologically, the archipelagos within the archipelago are the habitat units. Okay, so I've talked about the physical, chemical, the biological environment, the species that occur there, why they occur there. The only species I haven't talked about is humans. 